Hello everybody, my name is Code Blue, and welcome to part 2 in the game mode series. Now, I have tried my best to make my mic quality even better than before. I still haven't got a new mixer yet, um, but I hope it's more bearable now. So anyway, what we're going to be doing in this video is setting up the base part of the game mode. Now, some of you may or may not know, but I do have a team speak. The IP will be on the screen now, and anybody is welcome to join it at any time. If you're looking for help, you're just looking for somebody to play games, or you're just looking for somebody to talk to. It's there for anybody to hang out who wants to. And you know, you can talk to everybody about coding, you can do what you want. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I do wanna just heads up, it's not gonna be a very entertaining episode. Uh, we are just setting up the base of the game mode. So there's not gonna be any zombies or any crazy things like that. It's just literally a game mode that we can load into in the garage mode. So in order to do this, ooh, what the hell was that? In order to do this, you're gonna wanna go ahead and go to your game modes folder. Um, of course, in your garage mode, if you don't know what that is, it's Gary's mod, Gary's mod, and then game modes. Here you want to create a folder, and this is the name of your game mode. So I'm going to call this COD underscore zombies because I don't know what else to call it. Um, and then what we're going to do is in here we're going to create three folders. One's called game mode. This is where the Lua files for the actual game mode go. This is called entities. This is where you create all your entities. And this is the content, and this is all of your materials, um, like PNGs, sounds, stuff like that. Um, then what we're going to have to do is going to have to create a text document and call this the name of your game mode. So called underscore zombies dot txt. This is basically um, defining your game mode in Gary's mod. So we're going to want to do game mode like this. There we go. And inside here we're wanna, going to want to declare the base game mode. And of course the base game mode is going to be base. Um, for those of you who are wondering what bases there are, um, you can derive a game mode from another game mode. Uh, for example, sandbox derives from base, but we could derive this from, instead of deriving it from base, we could derive it from sandbox. And then we're gonna have the sandbox game mode as well as whatever we build onto it. But we don't want sandbox, we want a completely new game mode, so we start from base, okay? Then we need to define the title of our game mode. And for this, we're just gonna simply do uh, call of duty zombies, okay? I don't know what else to call this, so we're just gonna call it that. Um, and then we got to uh, define what maps are associated with our game mode. So if we did um, RP underscore, any RP map would be associated with our game mode. So when we're in the menu, it's going to appear to be part of our game mode. But we'll just go ahead and do uh, GM underscore because we don't have any particular maps. So we'll just associate GMod maps with it because what else? Um, then we're going to do the menu system. And we're just going to do this to one. This makes it so that it shows up on the main menu so that it could be selected as a game mode. Then what we're also going to do is do settings. Um, but we're going to leave this for now. We're not going to do anything here. We're just going to leave it like that. So this basically is um, the definition of our game mode. So this tells Gary's mod that our game mode exists. Okay. So now we're going to go into our game mode folder and we're going to create three files. And if you haven't guessed it yet, it's init.lua. Then it's cl underscore, whoops, cl underscore init dot, oh, dot, oh, wow. Uh, init. Uh, nope, cl underscore init dot lua. Yes, and we're going to create one more. And this is going to be called shared dot lua. So these are our three core game mode files. This is the server, this is the client, and this is a shared. You should already know this from my entities tutorial. And I do want to say now, if you haven't already watched my game mode series and you, you don't have any knowledge in, within scripting in Gary's mod, I highly recommend you go back and watch that because I'm making this tutorial assuming that you've already watched every video in that series. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and we're going to open up the init file, okay? And we're going to add cslua file. And we're going to go ahead and add cl underscore init. And this is so, of course, the client downloads the client side file. We're also going to add shared.lua. This is so that they download the shared. And we're going to include the, wow, we're going to include the shared file on the server. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to go into the shared. And here I have like a, um, what am I on about? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, that's it. So if you remember when we did the entities, um, when we did like ant dot print name and stuff like that, uh, well, we kind of had to do that for the game mode too, except we do GM instead. So we can do GM dot name equals call of duty zombies, just like that. Now, 
there is also other stuff you can put here. Like you could do GM author if you want to define the author, but that's not really important um, unless you, you really need it there. Um, but we'll go ahead and we've got to do one more thing in here. I'll explain what this does in another episode, uh, but we've got to do GM initialize. So when we do GM colon, uh, basically we're creating this function as part of the game, but we're overriding the function. So you know how we could create a hook? We could do like hook.add initialize like that and then some name and then some function right um that's kind of what we're doing up here but instead of making a hook we're actually overriding the function so any function like the old initialize function is now deleted and this is our new one the reason why we're doing this is because this is our game mode and you know if we was making an add-on for dark rp we don't want to override anything that's in dark rp by default like the function to give people money we don't want to override that um so we don't override it, we use it instead. But something like this in our own game mode, we have to override the default functions to make our own. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll do self.base class and oops, like I said, don't worry too much about this right now. Um, but if I could spell that is, we'll do initialize and then we'll do self, okay? Don't worry too much about this, but just know that this basically makes a call to the base game mode, the big game mode that we, we set as our base, and it goes ahead and initializes that. Um, so now we go in our uh, client, we've got this, um, sorry, in our client file here, and in our client file, all we're going to do for now is we're going to include that shared.lua, whoops, we're going to include that shared.lua file that we, we sent over to the client here, okay? Now this is technically all we need for a game mode. Um, at this point, we can connect and do some other stuff. But what we'll do is, rather than um, do things, if I do this, I'll show you a better example of the whole function thing. If you, if any of you, and you should have used the hook player initial spawn by now, um, this is a hook that gets called whenever the player spawns initially. So what we're going to do is, rather than creating a hook, we're actually going to override the function so that it overrides the base game mode function. Now, if you've ever been on the wiki and you've seen, like, when you've gone ahead and looked at the hooks and you see, like, gm colon player initial spawn, when you make a hook, you normally just use this part. But if you want to override the function, you do it like this. Now, you shouldn't ever override unless it's your own game mode. Uh, but anyway, uh, this will make more sense as we progress as well. But all we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to say print... Um, player and then we'll do poy colon name you should know this by now and then i'll say has spawned because this gets called when the player first spawns on the server but we'll do one more which is player connect and this takes uh this passes two parameters which is the name and the ip of the player that joined okay and this gets called whenever a player first connects to your server so here we'll go ahead and we'll print out um player dot dot name Whoops, connected with IP. And then here we could go ahead and print out the IP. And then that'll do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, make sure everything's all saved up. If you've gone ahead and done this, and got it exactly like mine. We should be able to go ahead and launch our game mode. There might be a little jump cut here if this takes a while. Okay, nope, that was pretty fast. Um, and you'll see that mine's already selected, but if you click on this little box down here, you'll be able to select your game mode. If your game mode does not appear here, then you have more than likely made a spelling mistake in your TXT file for your game mode. So double check it and make sure everything is the same as that. Of course, you can change the name and stuff, but make sure that these parts have the exact same spelling. Um, so when you do see it, we can go ahead and we can select it. We'll start a new game. We'll just start on uh, GM Flatgrass. We won't start on anything fancy. Um, and we just got a script error, which might be to do with our script. Okay, yes, it is. Uh, attempted to index field base class a nil value. So it appears that I, whoops, where's that? There it is. Um, it appears that I have made a spelling mistake, and I have. It's not base class, it's capital base and then capital C, like that. So now that we've saved that, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna disconnect, and I'm gonna try and reload into my function. Because even though that error didn't appear to break anything, you, you don't want errors. Errors are always bad. Um, okay, so now that we're in, as you can see, we get no errors, and we're in. So there is nothing fancy in here right now. Um, I mean, we have health, we don't even have a queue menu, we have a scoreboard, that's it, we have no weapons, there is nothing we can do, we can't even use a flashlight. This is the bare bones, or one of the most bare bones form of Gmod that you can get. Um, but if I type sv underscore cheats one, 
and then third person, you'll see that we don't even have a player model. This is the default model when one is not set. Um, but if we go ahead and we go up in our code here, this is where our game mode started. And of course, because I'm running this on a local machine, I connected and I hosted the server at the same time. It'll say player code blue connected with IP, and then it says loop back from my IP. The reason why it says that is because I have the same IP as the server, which I shouldn't have, but because I'm the host, that happens. That's not a problem though. But then as you can see, as all the game mode initializes here, it goes ahead and does all of its crap. Um, and then here at the bottom, it says player code blue has spawned, because this is when I actually spawned into the game. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. It will be more interesting next episode, I promise. We will do something a bit more entertaining. Um, but for now, like I said, I hope this makes sense. And again, any questions, leave a comment. Remember, if you want some help, check out my TeamSpeak. I'm normally in there. Um, so you can ask me any questions you want with, uh, with your code. But I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching, guys.